Hey guys, how's it going? Paul Harris here. Welcome back to another one of my videos. Today, we are talking about the ACA exam. Specifically, what you can do to ensure that you pass each one of these exams. Now I'm gonna go over my experience of doing these exams, how it's sort of formatted uh, in terms of how much time you get off, and what I did to ensure that I was able to pass each one of these exams first time. So, it's just gonna be a few tips, really, on how you can pass these exams. It might help you, hopefully it does. Let's get into it. So the ACA exams are very similar to the format of the ACCA exams or any other accounting qualification. And the way they're always structured is you have, say, 15 exams, and they're split over three tiers. So you have a sort of a multiple choice level of exams. You then have a more difficult, say, written exams that are, say, like two hours long. And then with the ACA, you have three exams at the top, which really encapsulate everything that you've learned in the previous three exams. So the way that this is structured when you're at a company like uh, PwC is that you will have time off to really go to one of the ex external bodies that uh, PwC has a contract with and then they will teach you uh, externally uh, all the information that you need to pass those exams. So the time you get off uh, at the beginning to do the, the beginner level exams is, is not very much. You might get a few days off per exam. And, and then as you progress to the harder exams, you get more time off to uh, study the material. But in each case, you don't get a lot of time to actually revise. You might get a day or so uh, before the actual exam itself. So the way it's structured is you'll, you know, you'll learn the material, say, a month or six weeks before the exam, and then uh, coming up to the exam, you know, the week of, you might get like a day or two. And for the harder exams, you might get like a, a week or a couple of weeks off to sort of cram uh, more revision material into that week. So that's the way it's structured. But it, it's, it's framed in a way that it's, it makes it quite challenging to pass the exams because you're obviously having to cope with also doing work at the same time in amongst these exams. So it's not like you have an unlimited time to learn the material. You sort of have to make do with the time that you have available. And if the exams are set over, you know, January to March, that's the kind of busy season, which means there's a very busy time. And then if you have exams as well, it sometimes feels quite hard to pass these exams. So what's my advice for you when studying. So so broadly speaking, how was I able to pass these exams? What what was the my main thought process when when I was going to do these exams? Well, firstly, I I knew that what came first was passing these exams. You know, PwC and other companies push you to work hard and work very long hours. But at the end of the day, you only get like two chances to pass one of these exams. And if you don't pass it on your second time, you, you may get fired from these companies. So the reality is you really have to prioritize these above everything else because you're no good to that company unless you pass the exams. So if that means being very forceful about, you know, not working ridiculous hours, then that's just what you have to do and at the at the and I would say that that's more important particularly for you because this is a qualification for you you know if that means in the short term people don't look as highly on you because you're not working as longer hours as people who've already passed the exams then tough I, I think I think you need to be focusing purely on yourself because I knew people who we started at PwC with that gave everything to PwC and worked very long hours, 12 hour days, didn't have enough time to revise, they failed the exams and they got fired. And as a result, you know, the PwC don't have that resource anymore and now they don't have a qualification. So I really think you need to focus on that being the priority because that's the thing that you're going to be taking with you. You might not stay at PwC forever or one of these other professional firms, but that qualification will be with you forever so long as you pay £380 a year. So that's the first thing, priorit prioritize studying. The next thing is to realize that you'll have no social life. <laughs> Between learning the material and doing the exam, just accept the fact that your evenings and weekends are pretty much taken up. And that is a huge chunk of the first couple of years that you're at these professional firms. It, and it probably feels a little bit unmanageable is because you're working long hours and then you also don't get a weekend. But at the end of the day, the, the quicker you're able to realize that, the more you can start to, uh, you know, climatize to that kind of environment where you, um, you don't have a social life. So it's all good. So, so once you've accept that, and I, I'm, I'm quite good at going, um, you know, really once getting into the routine of doing something, even if that what you're doing is a very, you know, grinding it out process. So, you know, 
for the six weeks prior to every exam, I basically said from eight o'clock to 10 o'clock every evening, I'm going to the office and revising. And, <laughs> and I'd go every day, every day, because I always think if you really want to compound how much you learn, if you want to get good at something, do it every single day. And why do you do it every single day? Well, you're not giving your brain any opportunity to forget the thing that you learned the previous day. You see, if you're always taking one step forward every time you do something, then every time you don't do it, you're taking one step back. Just avoid taking one step back. I'll show you another analogy here relating to that is uh, uh, Michael Phelps, uh, the Olympic uh, racer, you know, most ever gold Olympic medals won, I think. And he uh, realized that all the other swimmers in his field um, or pool uh, basically took Sundays off, you know, he and he as a result decided to swim and do practice every single day for like 10 years He did that and the success of those small margins the fact that he was training that little bit more every single week You know the fact that he wasn't doing it was that's the difference and that's the that's your ability to compound what you learn and progress something is so much more vital when you do it every single day so 8 to 10 you know Get the Red Bulls on the way to the office, or Relentless, I think I used to drink, which are dis these disgusting um, energy drinks that are like, like, you know, double the Red Bull size. Um, probably wouldn't advise you doing that, but anything you need to do, get that work done. Just do a little bit every single day for about six weeks before the exam. Next piece of advice. And you might be thinking, well, where's the advice on how to actually like learn how to do corporate reporting? That's not this kind of video, unfortunately. <laughs> the next piece of advice that I have for you is that when you're uh, revising, it's so much people's tendency to pick the topics that they know well. It's so lovely to sit down, look at a question that you actually know how to pass. Because then, you know, straight away you're into it. Oh, I'm going to do this one first before I get onto something else. So you, you have all your energy. The first time you sit down to do a practice question, you have all that energy built up. And a lot of people, you know, oh, I'm going to just make some nice pretty notes first and then I'll get onto the questions. Or I'm just going to answer this question that I know how to answer already. Because then once I get into the routine, I can get into something else. Forget that. Start with the thing you hate. If you look at a question, you go, well, that looks awful. I don't want to do that. Do that one first. Do the questions that you don't know the answers to. Because at the end of the day, you don't get, you don't pass the exam because you know how to do one question very, very well. You pass the exam because you know how to do every single question to a passable ability. You know, the times have gone where you can wing it or don't need to focus on certain questions. The way these exams are framed is that there's a limitation on the topics that they actually ask you. There's going to be a huge amount that you learn that just isn't on the exam. So you want to get good and passable at every single question. And the best way you do that is just by when you go in to study, you have the most amount of energy, put that energy into a question that you hate doing. Because even if that's the only question you do and you've ticked off a question that you wouldn't have been able to do before, you've learned so much more. You've gone from say 10% of that question had gone up to 60% as opposed to getting, you know, from a 70% mark on a question you already know to a 75% mark. So that's pretty much my advice. I mean, what did I do? I accepted, at the time I was uh, living in Cardiff when I was passing the exams and my girlfriend, now wife, lived um, up in Windsor. And so I literally didn't see her for like two months. <laughs> and every day I'd go to the office with my Red Bulls and just study the exams and you know and forget doing notes I, I maybe some people are good with doing revision notes and making everything look pretty for me it's just volume just just do so much volume get the questions out tackle the questions i hate doing the most first before long all the questions become you know questions that you're okay doing because you've seen them all before so tackle the questions tackle the questions before you even know how to do the material properly because you're getting your brain chugging into a, a frame of m mind that sort of tries to work things out that's how you learn is trying to work things out you know I think people say the retention level when you read something is like 5%. So you just forget, you know, 95% of what you read. If you try and answer a question based on it, the retention level is like 40%. If you try and then explain that question and explain how to do it to someone else, the retention is something like 80%. The more you can absorb information and try and pass onto someone else, 
the, the more it'll seal it. Because you know when you're younger and a teacher asks you like a question when you're in class and in your mind you go, oh, I know the answer to that. And then once you start speaking, your mouth isn't saying the words that your brain knew what the answer was. It's going, I don't know why I'm not, like I know it, I just can't explain it right now. That's because your brain, that's, that's part of the retention. It's being able to formalize and improve the communication on how to answer a question. So if you can explain it, you know, if you can answer the question, that's one thing, then explain it to one of your colleagues how to do the question. I think that was another big one is that I went to the office with a lot of other people and then there was a lot of explaining how to do answers and things like that. So it really confirms whether you know something, whether you can explain it. There we are. That's my advice for today. Subscribe to my channel. See you next time. See you next time. Bye-bye.